So the Pittsburgh Penguins win game number three in Tampa, four to two. Shots were 48-28 after the game, with Pittsburgh getting 21 shots in the second period alone to Tampa Bay's six. But thanks to the strong play of Andre Vasilevsky, if you're a Tampa fan, the Lightning only managed to get out of the first second period one nothing when Phil Kessel burst down the rush beating Victor Hedman, no less, set up Carl Heiglin for the go-ahead goal. That was a huge goal for the Penguins because the floodgates opened after that. They would then Pittsburgh and make it 4-1. Finally, Tampa would score to make it 4-2 with the triplets finally contributing, being back together. So that's a positive for Tampa. Could be bad news for Pittsburgh if they get going because we all know how good they are together. But there is another line that's bad news for everyone else that totally dominated again. The HBK line, Hart, Heglin, Benino, Kessel, the Heartbreak Kit line, named after Shawn Michaels, the original HBK Heartbreak Kit wrestler. Uh, this line has been on fire ever since coming together in late March, actually by accident, thanks to Gay Watkins' injury, but they've just been unstoppable. Kessel with the great speed and the rush to set up the first goal, and then again with the goal of his own sick, sick snipe. Crosby scored another sick goal two games in a row. One knee from bad angle from Malkin on the power play. Malkin ended his points, um, ended his six game scoring drought, as it were. Justin Schultz got in on there. His first game, his first playoff point. Um, second game he's been in for only out of being scratched, and he'll probably be in again tonight. But that game was one of the most dominant games. By a team I've ever seen. That second period was probably the most dominant second period of hockey I've ever seen. 21 shots alone in the second. Vastovsky had more shots the first half than Matt Murray had all game. Tampa just, they, they did not look like they didn't know what hit them. They were just sluggish. They, they were slow. They could not keep up with Pittsburgh at all, especially when, the, when, you're, when you're in the neutral zone. Pittsburgh is there, and they're taking those pucks. They're so quick on the transition game. I don't think there's any team quicker in the league on the transition game than the Penguins, and they make you pay. If you don't move the puck act right away, Pittsburgh is on you making your pay. One thing Tampa does really well is they do have really good sticks, um, which does allow to get the Penguins in there. But the Penguins are also very aggressive on the penalty kill as well. And um, the Penguins, uh, D, while they might not have the same sticks as Tampa, they're really good at playing the body. They're always in really good body position. Brian Dumoulin's had a heck of a series. Latang's had an incredible series, an incredible playoff. He was a beast again last night. Played over 27 minutes again for like the fourth game in a row. Matt Murray is just come out of nowhere. He rebounded nicely. I don't think he had much of a chance in either of the goal. First goal, yeah, he was beat through the bottom a little bit, but he could have got maybe got his blocker down tight, but it was it was it was not a bad goal. Uh Tyler Johnson's a great player. So funny part in all this is that Phil Kessel is on the quote third line and is leading the team in playoff scoring with sixteen points. Yeah, and everyone always talked about how Phil Kessel was not a playoff performer, yet he is one of only four players since 2008 to have over a point per game in the playoffs. Crosby and Walken are the other two, Ron Getzlaff and Phil Kessel. Um, Phil Kessel is the, by far the best player for the Leafs when they went on their run in 2013, and for the Bruins, he was younger, but he still got a point a game. So he's been on fire, and if the Penguins go all the way, he is among the favorites to win the Conn Smythe. You know, everyone thought it'd be Crosby, everyone thought it'd be Malkin, but Malkin's not had consistent line mates. You know, he played with Crosby and he's looked amazing when they're when they're together. And I think we'll see more of that tonight with Sullivan. But he's kind of getting short of the stick, playing with, you know, Rust and and Sheary, who are young, but um, you know, they're starting to show their youth. Sheary's not played a lot the last two games. He's looked like he's struggling. Rust is a bit more mature. He's playing a bit better. Um, but and then, you know, and then you have Crosby's now reunited with Kunitz and Hornquist. They're starting to get going. You know, Kunitz is looking like he's better now that he's back with Crosby. Crosby's a beast as well. He was all over the ice making things happen. And Walken was as well. He just didn't have line mates that can finish. So everyone thought those guys would win. But those guys have either been getting shut down by their opponents or they've not had proper line mates or they've been getting unlucky. And that's just left the HBK line to go crazy. Those three have just been absolutely on 
fire lighting the league up with the great nickname and then the penguins fourth line is called the kfc line which i think is fantastic with kunakle fair and cullen which has also been a quite underrated line um Puck possession wise, they're not the best, but that's because they're usually getting the defensive zone starts. But Matt Collins been incredible, leads the team in faceoff wins, always gets tough matchups, and he shows no signs of age at age thirty nine, which is amazing. And also the fact that Kunaku calls him dad is pretty hilarious. There's only fifteen age difference, but it's quite funny. So yeah, the Penguins are quite fun to watch right now. I've not had this much fun watching them since two thousand and nine. They've never been this fast or this exciting. That being said, I think Tampa knows they're going to come on hard tonight. They were not happy being dummied at home, being embarrassed like that, being totally outshot. And Tampa came out hard last game, but ended up losing. So if Pittsburgh can withhold the pressure, they know Tampa's going to come out hard. Pittsburgh could be heading back home with a 3-1 series lead and a chance to clinch the game with Hart Bay Ken in the building. So I initially said Pittsburgh in six. So... Um, that means either we have to be 2-2 two, two tonight and then Pittsburgh and then 3-2 or whatever. So who knows? Um, it might only be Pittsburgh in five now the way they're playing. But um, yeah, Tampa could come back and win tonight. I I mean, it could go either way. And we know Pittsburgh's good at home, but they did lose one at home to Tampa. So Pittsburgh might win tonight. Tampa might come back for us game five and Pittsburgh win game six in Tampa. Or Tampa could win tonight. But um, yeah, I mean, really, it, it all depends on and if Pittsburgh comes to play and if Tampa comes to play, because I know Tampa's going to come to play. Um, it just matters if, if Pittsburgh can can withhold uh, withhold the pressure and if they can come to play, but I think they can because they've looked pretty incredible so far. Uh, Matt Murray's looked great. Best left sleeves look fantastic for Tampa. Tampa doesn't even need the mission at this point. Andre's really helped the fourth down. It's really been fun to watch. I think if he plays another game like he played last game, Tampa could win. He, he could steal a game for sure for Tampa Bay because he was this close last game. So... That's all I have for this video. Please like it if you like. Subscribe if you really like it. Share with all your friends. Tell everyone, and I'll see you after the game today. Let's go Penguins.